Okay, so uh, moving forward from an incredibly complicated design creating example um, and inspection example to something which is uh, a nice little refresher, <laughs> which is uh, a very simple question on center lines and kind of the rules behind them. Um, so Jamie asked, uh, what is the rule or best practice for representing feature center line marks on multi-view 2D drawings? particularly when the other views, um, the features represented as hidden. Uh, so maybe there's some hidden uh, examples here, or um, you have some geometry internally in the part um, that uh, you know may be difficult to centerline. So I am of the school of thought is not required to show centerlines marks for features and alternative views unless they serve a dimensioning purpose. And you are right about this. Um, oops, sorry, I got to go back. Um, you are right about this dimensioning purpose, but I want to make sure everyone understands the reason we use center lines to begin with, uh, typically. So, yes, they should serve some sort of dim uh, dimensioning purpose, and they are optional if you don't have that. However, dimensioning purpose could mean uh, an example like this, where we're trying to dimension where the center line to the center line of hole is. But this center line right here, and I wanted to make sure everyone sees this, is also serving a dimensional purpose on its own. And this gets into the rule of what a center line actually is. A center line not only represents the center of a feature, it also represents a location, an orientation in GD&T specifically, or a basic dimension of zero between this axis and this axis. And you might be saying, well, wait a second, those are the same axis. And I will say, actually, no, they're not. You are never telling a machinist how they have to machine a part when you're a design engineer. You're only listing what the requirements have to be. So maybe I come in and I machine this hole, I flip the part over and I drill in this hole now or the other way around too. Or maybe I do the through hole first and then I do the counter bore, which is probably how they do it. Um, those could, there could be some shift in the axis of those holes. There could be some movement in the fixture. From a microscopic point of view or down to the truth of this, those will have two different separate axes since they are two separate features. So we would need to have the center line to show what the center line shows is that in a perfect world, the basic dimension or the goal of these is to be the exact same axis. And that's why on many drawings, we have some sort of uh, general position, like unless otherwise specified, you may see UOS or unless otherwise specified. Maybe it's like position of um, 10 thou or something like that. And what that means is that, hey, if you are machining this, we need some sort of tolerance of how far this hole can be from this hole. Well, if I don't list anything, then they can be 10 thou apart. So this could be shifted over 5 thou in that direction. That could be shifted over 5 thou in that direction. Uh, but that's probably acceptable, or maybe it's not. I don't know. So center lines also serve us that purpose. Um, beyond just saying that they are dimensioned from hole to hole, you know, in a location linearly like that, they're also showing that coaxially these are zero basic dimensions. Um, this is something that a lot of people miss. Now, you may not have position tolerance here. You may have, unless otherwise specified, um, all axes, you know, within uh, one thousandth of each other, something like that. Now, that's a little bit more vague because some people might not know what that means. Position is very clearly documented in the standard, but you still need the center line in that um, if you are dimensioning, because we need to say, well, how far can those axes be? Or how far off can the counter bore be from the axis of that hole? So the rule of thumb would be, yes, you need them for dimensioning purposes, but you also need them for dimensioning purposes if there are more than one feature along that center line. So if there is more than one feature along the center line, you do have to show them on your print. You do have to do something. You can see here that I've done a section view uh, for that part on here. Um, I use sections in here. Uh, and 
you can see that I've given the center lines here to show that all of these exist on one center. It's to add clarity to our print. You have to have that to make sure everyone knows and doesn't give you a part where this axis is off from this axis because you never listed how far off they have to be. Um, the other thing to remember is when you are dimensioning to a center line, so let's say we had um, you know, some dimension, I always use 10 plus or minus, uh, let's say uh, 0 to 5, uh, 25 thou oh, oh, from hole to hole. Um, keep in mind that there's actually kind of like a 2x there because we have one axis here and we have one axis there. Um, and technically we have one axis here and one axis here too. That's why datums and, um, and GD and T add clarity because there are ways this can get screwed up if you do it this way. But if you just have coordinate dimensioning on here, you have to remember that there are two features we're dimensioning and both holes, not just one axis we're measuring. There's actually two axes here that have to be held within that. So by the way, all of this information, we do have this in our engineering drawing basics course. Um, be sure to sign up. It's brand new. Uh, the Engineering Drawing Basics course covers these fundamental rules of engineering drawings um, that exist even before GD&T happen on the print. Um, we both talk about you know center lines in the Engineering Drawing Basics course, and we have an entire lesson just on section views, which are ways to do this. So be sure to check that out and uh, let us know if you have any more questions on center lines because these are something that come up quite a bit. All right, moving on to our last one here.